Hi everyone, today I want to talk about my experience recreating the Tinder card swiping with Godot. In my previous video, I did it with the Instagram UI. Check out the video if you want. For this one, I'm going to show you how I made the card swiping and the match screen. Let's get started. When you want to recreate something, it's important to start with a study of the existing. In my previous UI recreation, this part was too long, so I'm going to make it very short this time. The page we want to recreate is pretty simple. At the top and bottom, we have navigation menus. They are fixed in size and position. At the center, we have the profile card with a photo and some text. We can swipe the card left or right. It's going to follow our finger. If we click on the left or right of the card, it's it's going to change the photo displayed. The match screen is pretty simple, with a photo, a bit of text, a text input and a button to send a message. For the icons, I couldn't find the exact match, so I took some icons from icons8.com and recreated the gradient in Photoshop. For the images, I quickly drew some portrait in Inkscape. I made three different persons with different expressions, just to see we're changing photos later in the app. Okay, now that we know what we need to recreate and we have the icons and the images, we can go to Godot. For the project settings, I choose 1080 by 1920 with a portrait orientation. For stretch mode, I chose viewport and expand to allow for tall screens. I made an app scene that's the entry point of the app in which we have four containers. Two margins containers are for the top and bottom menus. Inside them, I used an HBox container to arrange the icons horizontally. You'll see throughout the UI, I'm using a lot of margin containers. This is a very handy container container that allow precise margins. It makes spacing everything so much easier. I use it a lot in the bottom menu to allow small and big buttons at the same time in the HBox container without having to deal with different icon sizes. Another margin container is used to hold the current card and finally, at the end of the node tree, I put a simple control node to hold the match scene that we'll create later. The match scene is pretty simple. I'm using an image taking the full screen. I've used two margin containers, one to hold the it's a match text that I made in Inkscape and the other to hold a VBox container at the bottom of the scene. I use simple labels for the text and a line edit for the text input. I made it white with rounded corners by using a style box flat. The send button is using a transparent transparent style box flat. Small tip, by making the button as a child of the line edit, you can set its anchor point to the right. And the button will always stay here if the line edit expands. Okay, now that we have that, we can go to the most important scene, the card. Same as with the match scene, I used an image in full rect allowed to expand. To make the scroll indicator at the top, I simply used progress bars with two style box flat style. I made the background with rounded corners and a dark color and the same for the foreground but with white this time. That way to indicate which photo is currently shown I simply change the current progress bar to a value of 100 and the others to 0. It's a simple way to make indicators without having to change textures or something. For the bottom part of the card I made the text and the information icon child of a button. The button has a transparent style box flat. By doing that the button gets triggered whether you press on the text or the icon. In the Tinder app this would bring another page with more information about the profile, but I didn't bother to make it. I added two labels for the like and nope that appear when you're swiping. I'm making them transparent at first and will change their opacity during the swipe. Now onto the script. Everything that is interesting is happening in the input function. First, if the event is an input event mouse button, we know it's a click. I'm checking the position of the event. If it's on the right of the screen, we can display the next image and on the left, the previous image. Because this event will also be triggered when making a swipe, I need a way to differentiate the two. So I'm setting a variable called pressed to true when we detect a press. I'm going to set this variable to false as soon as we detect a drag event. That way we can differentiate a click event from the end of a drag event. If the event is an input event screen drag, I want to do three things. First, move the card based on the event and the first press event's positions. I'm also making the card row 
rotate based on how far it has moved in the X direction. Second, I'm setting the opacity of the like or nope label based on how far we are in the X direction. I've defined a distance at which this should be shown, called nope like visible dist. This is to make sure we can see the labels early enough. Finally, I'm saving the current even speed to a variable named latest speed. This is used in the input event mouse button case. If the event is released, we check the speed at which we were swiping. I've defined the speed required to be a thousand, so a thousand pixels per second. If this value is too high, it's very hard to swipe, and if it's too low, just a small thing will swipe the card. If the condition is not met, the card goes back to its original position. In the case of a screen drag event, I'm sending a signal called moving. This tells the app scene that we are swiping, so it can load another card beneath the current one and we'll see that next and with that we've created all the necessary scenes in the app scene script i've connected the various signals such as finished moving like and dislike i'm not using dislike but it could be used in a real app to send data to a database for example in the unlike method it makes a match at random if there's a match the match card is added to the match container and i'm setting the image and connecting its signal to continue swiping as i said previously the moving signal is used to instantiate a new card. I'm connecting its signal to the script, setting it to disabled to make sure its signal won't fire, and finally, I'm moving the next card position in the tree to make sure it's going to be at the back of the current card. When the swiping is finished, the script receives finished, and the next card is enabled. And with that, we have everything for the Tinder swiping mechanic. As you can see, we can swipe left and right. If we don't finish the swipe, the card will come back to its original position. We can view different photos by clicking left or right. If there's a match, the match screen appears with a small animation of the text. We have the text field and if we click on continue swiping, the scene disappears and we can go back to swiping. It was a fun experiment to make and it was actually easier than I thought. The input event screen drag is super useful and having the speed already built in the event makes everything so much easier. I hope you liked this video, this was very fun to make. If you want to see other apps remade in Godot, please tell me, especially if they have some unusual UI or some cool effects you want me to recreate. As always, the sources are available on my GitHub, link in the description. Thanks for watching, see you later, bye!